Carissa Pavlika, TV fanatic. Hi, Liz. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. You and Carly have had such great success with oh. female-driven programming. What's your thanks. secret? I mean, you should definitely make things with one of your closest friends who you trust implicitly and respect creatively. It really helps. Um, you know, I think we're just, um, we try to stay, uh, you know, true to the things that we find funny and interesting and important. Um, you know, I think we're pretty, um, we also are fairly like monogamous as we make things, you know, like we, I wish we had like a gazillion things you know, going on everywhere. But I think actually like we tend to make something and focus all of our energy on that baby um, for the most part. So I think, you know, there's a real, um, I think that we really have to love the thing that we're making because we invest a lot of time and energy in it. Um, you know, we're pretty hands-on producers. We, um, we don't tend to hand off our, our, our stuff to other people to, to make. Um, we like being around for everything, um, which is why it's good that we have each other because I think it can, it can be a very big and sometimes lonely job making television. So it's really nice when you have, you know, a partner in crime to, that, you know, you like hanging out with. How would you say that Roar challenges people's expectations of women on television? Um, I think in a bunch of different ways, you know, I think that we're um, playing in a few sandboxes that you don't normally, um, that women don't get invited to as often maybe, or at least that's how we were feeling. Um, you know, I think there is something about the, um, the immediacy and boldness of the, of the conceits that asks you to like, meet this woman and get on the ride with her um, that I think is, is pretty thrilling, especially since we have such a talented array of actresses who are all so good and so game. Um, and, you know, I think as, as strained as some of the episodes are in terms of how they are telling, how we're trying to tell some of these stories, um, you know, I think the thing that unites all of them is I think there's a really grounded emotional narrative for each character um, that, that, that I think everyone is really invited into um, with these performances. So, you know, but I think the show is doing a lot of different things. Um, it's not just trying to do a couple of things. So it's, I think in a great way, it's a little mood swingy. Um, and that to me is the fun of the experience, you know, you are going from like a psychological horror to a Western, to a rom-com. And, you know, that's that those things all smashed up against one another is really, is, is pretty thrilling. Um, but I think new for maybe for people to experience with um, a female. And just sentence. real quick, um, there were 30 stories in this book. Are you yeah. hoping to continue Roar into further seasons? I mean, I think we'd love to. I think there are a lot of other filmmakers who we'd love to bring into the fold and and see what they do. Like, I think, you know, I think Carly and I have figured out, um, you know, both from the book and some of our original ideas, like here are some of our horror stories, but I think there are so many um, amazing actors and writers and writer directors who I think would, I would love to, you know, hand the roar baton to to see what, what episode they would make. Um, so yeah, I think there's, you know, I think the female experience is um, very kaleidoscopic and this is just hopefully the beginning of a piece of that kaleidoscope. Um, so yeah, I, we would love to make more. Brilliant, thank you so much. It was a pleasure of talking course. to you. Of course, thank you. So good to talk to you too.